Fellas, we're back with the best fighter combinations in the UFC. Now by this, I mean where you merge two completely different fighters together in one fighter and you make an absolute beast goat potential now we're going to be doing this for one fight or for two fighters in every division so for example in 2018 we could have done mcgregor's striking and khabib's wrestling basically where you merge two qualities of two different fighters in a weight class and try and create the ultimate fighter now this could be attributes this can be things like power or chin or fight iq or it could also be martial arts like wrestling and striking whatever it may be so um we're going to be doing two of these in every division, starting off with heavyweight. I'm going to go with John Jones's fight IQ and then Derek Lewis's power. Now, John Jones is near enough a fully complete fighter. There's not much you can really do to make John Jones better, but the fight IQ is there, but the, the power could be improved. Jones never he's never really been known for his power on the feet. He's never he's never really knocked anyone out cold on the feet. I mean, he's, you know, he put... um. Who was it? Leoto Machida. Was it Leoto Machida? Yeah, I think yeah, Leoto Machida. He put him away on the feet. But when it comes to one-shot power, Jones isn't really known for that. Whereas Derek Lewis, that's all he's really known for. You look at Derek Lewis's wins, 90-80% of his wins are all by slumping people. You get John Jones's fight IQ and give it Derek Lewis's power. You've got a dangerous fighter. You've got a dangerous. And not that John Jones isn't already dangerous, but you're gonna make him ten times more dangerous than he is. It, the John Jones's career wouldn't have changed much in terms of wins. He would uh, obviously have still won every one of his fights, but he would have way more finishes on his record by like knockout. He would have way more finishes by knockout. This would be arguably the best fighter you can possibly make. Like if you get a creator fighter and put that overalls to ninety nine, John Jones's fight IQ with Derek Lewis's power is like the maximum you can get. So I'm going to say that John Jones with his fight IQ and Derek Lewis with his one-shot slumping power, I think this is the best fighter you can make, possibly. I really do. I think this is the best fighter you can make. So I'm going with Jones's IQ and Lewis's power. Light heavyweight. We're going with martial arts. I know striking isn't a martial art. I'm just going to sum it up, though. Alex Pereira's striking and Magomed Ankalaev's wrestling. This would be arguably got potential for light heavyweight. Obviously... I don't think everyone, anyone's ever going to... I can't speak. I don't think anyone's going to overtake John Jones at light heavyweight. But when it comes to like making fighters, Alex Pereira's striking and Magomed Medankalaev's wrestling. Put them together, you've got a beast. I mean, Alex Pereira is the most dangerous fighter on the feet at light heavyweight. I mean, he rocked Jan Blachowicz. In my opinion, he's going to beat Yuri Prohaska. He's the most dangerous on the feet, arguably in the UFC. Um... Magomed Ankalaev is the best wrestler at light heavyweight. You put them together, you've got a beast. Magomed, it's like you can choose wherever the fight goes. You want to keep it on the feet, you've got Pereira striking. You want to wrestle, you've got Magomed Ankalaev's wrestling. Magomed Ankalaev's a dangerous wrestler. You know what he did to Jan Blachowicz, even when he, what he did to um, Anthony Smith. And obviously Alex Pereira, do I need to explain? Former two-time, I think he was a two-weight division, glory kickboxing champion, so... You put these martial arts together with their, the skills that both of these guys have, you've got a dangerous fighter on your hands. Like, there's nothing you can do. You can't take him down to avoid Pereira striking because you've got Ankalaev's wrestling. You can't keep it on the feet to avoid Ankalaev's, to avoid Pereira striking because you've got Ankalaev's wrestling. He's hard, man. Wherever the fight goes, you're screwed. Unless you're, like, a ten times better wrestler than Magomed Ankalaev, or you managed to catch Alex Pereira like Adesanya did. But even Adesanya wouldn't do anything against this fighter. I know it's a different weight class. But when you've got Magomed Ankalaev's wrestling, this would be a dangerous fighter. Technically a life dedicated to each martial art and you've just merged them in one. This fighter would be unstoppable. Probably the next light heavyweight go after Jones. So I'm going to say that Alex Pereira's striking... The poet on striking with the power that he has and the technique that he has and the experience that he has with Magomed Ankalaev's five round draining ground and pound wrestling. I think you've got arguably one of the best fighters here. So for light heavyweight, I'm going to choose those two names. Middleweight, I'm going to use striking and wrestling again, but I'm going to use Adesanya striking and Shemaev's wrestling. This would be a this would be an absolute beast of a fighter. You've got Adesanya who's the best striker at middleweight, and Hamza Chimaev, who just like light heavyweight, the best grappler at middleweight or wrestler at middleweight. I mean, Hamza Chimaev alone is a huge threat to the middleweight division with his wrestling. Um, you know the way he ragdolls everybody. But imagine he had stand up like Israel Adesanya. You would be. There's nothing you can do. There's no way you're you're competing with him on on the in the wrestling side of things. 
The only way you could overcome this fighter is if he was like a kind of like a Jeff Neal type of guy where you've got good takedown defense and great striking. But even with good takedown defense, you're not stopping Hamza. And even with good striking, you're not going to beat Adesanya. This fight would be completely... Like, look at the times Adesanya has lost. It's to Jan Blachowicz where Adesanya would be able to hold his own on the feet. Even I know Jan Blachowicz arguably outstruck Adesanya, but then you've got Chamaya's wrestling to back it up. And Alex Pereira was literally on the feet the entire time. You put Hamzat Chemaev against Alex Pereira, that's not even competitive. Hamzat takes him down immediately. So you put these two together, you've got the middleweight got. So if Adesanya had Hamzat Chemaev's wrestling, again, it's one of those situations where you can control where the fight goes. You want to keep it on the feet and strike with Adesanya, or use Adesanya's striking, you can do that. You want to take it to the floor using Hamzat Chemaev's wrestling, you can do that. So for middleweight, I'm going to say these two are the best that you can possibly choose. Welterweight, I struggle at first, but I'm going to go with Leon Edwards' is striking and Colby Covington's wrestling again. Leon Edwards is, is a pretty complete fighter. He's got a good takedown defense, and obviously, in my opinion, the well, one of the best strikers in the in the welterweight division. Welterweight's got some good strikers in there. You know, Ian Gary, um, Jack Della Maddalena, Jeff Neal. There's a lot of good strikers in the welterweight division. But I think Leon Edwards is the best out of all of them. And then you get Colby Covington's wrestling on top of that. you got a beast. The only reason Usman beat or Usman was close to beating uh, Leon Edwards in their rematch in the third fight was because of the wrestling. Usman's game plan was to kind of survive on the feet and take him down. If you've got Covington's wrestling, th there's nothing Usman can do. Like if you look at Usman versus Covington, it was mainly a, a fight on the feet. It was mainly just a fight on the feet, and Usman was able to win it on the feet. When you've got Leon Edwards just striking on the feet, you're not winning that. This would essentially just be, if you were to mix these martial arts, there's no contender can do anything. Bilal Mohamed's not taking Colby Covington down, and he's not surviving on the feet with Leon Edwards. You know what I mean? Gilbert Burns, I mean, he's he can do something on the feet with Edwards. I mean, Gilbert Burns would probably be the toughest test. Even Shavkat's not doing anything, because I think he's got overrated striking, but... You got Colby Covington's draining five round wrestling. You've got Leon Edwards' striking. This would be a beast of a fighter. This would be an absolute nightmare to deal with. Potentially beats GSP as well. Yeah, this would be an absolute nightmare to deal with. Nobody's out wrestling Colby Covington. For right now, no one's really out striking Edwards. And even if there was a striker to come and beat Edwards, I doubt they'd have good enough wrestling like Colby Covington to be able to survive that either. So. I'm going to say this will be the toughest fight or the toughest two people you can put together for one fighter in the welterweight division. Lightweight, once again with wrestling and striking, I'm going to go with Islam Makachev's wrestling and Justin Gaethje's striking. Islam Makachev, arguably the best wrestler in the UFC right now. Arguably he's the best wrestler in the UFC. You know, the the only real... I mean, what he, he needs to face some more tough opponents, in my in my opinion, is on Makachev. Maybe not more tough opponents, but just more opponents because he's only really faced Oliveira and Alexander Volkanovsky, which were impressive, by the way. The reason I didn't choose Charles Oliveira as the other fighter is because I don't think Islam really needs Oliveira. He's already pretty much a better striker than Oliveira, and he already submitted Oliveira. I think if you give Ol uh, Islam Makachev Oliveira's BJJ... I don't think he changes that much of a fighter, but if you give Islam Makachev Justin Gaethje striking, he would be a beast on the feet. He'd be an absolute beast on the feet. Justin Gaethje has the the, the most power in his punches. I think when it comes down to pure power, like hard hitting, I'd probably give it to Chandler. But actually, like accuracy and timing and everything, and mixed with power as well, goes to Gaethje. He outstruck Dustin Poirier. He outstruck uh, Tony Ferguson, Rafael Fiziev as well. Tony, uh, Justin Gaethje is by far the best striker in the division. He doesn't really use his wrestling any uh, much, but that's because Islam Akachev has got the wrestling to back it up in this scenario. So there's no lightweight that can do this. Even Khabib would be screwed because Khabib has to deal with Islam Makachev's wrestling and then it would just come down to cancelling each other out where it's just striking. So then it would be Khabib striking versus Gaethje striking and Gaethje would win. Um, so if you put these two fighters together, I think you've got a lightweight goat, potentially the goat of the UFC coming along. No one can do anything. Like, even if there was a striker like, I don't know, an improved Fiziev who came along and beat Gaethje on the feet, then you've got to deal with Islam Makachev on the wrestling side of things, which no one's doing right now. Like, Islam Makachev alone could still be potentially be the lightweight goat, but even with Gaethje striking, you've just got a dangerous fighter. Pretty much nothing you can do in this situation. So for lightweight, I'm going with Gaethje striking and Islam Makachev's wrestling. 
Featherweight, I'm going with Alexander Volk Volkanovsky for everything, but Yair Rodriguez for height. Now, Volkanovsky is the most complete fighter in the UFC. He's got submission. Well, he doesn't really have submissions, but he's got wrestling and he's got striking and he's amazing at both. I'm looking at the featherweight division and there's not much qualities. Maybe I could give him, I don't know, the power of someone. I don't know, maybe I could give him someone's power like Ilya Taporia. But I think if you give Alexander Volkanovsky Yair Rodriguez's height, then he could go for the lightweight belt. I think there's nothing you can really do to make him better at um, featherweight. He's already pretty complete at featherweight. He's ruled the division out. The only person he hasn't beaten is Ilya Taporia. And I'm not going to count Arnold Allen because he's already lost to Holloway. You give Volkanovski Yair Rodriguez Yair Rodriguez's height, and that's going to be way tougher for Islam Makachev. That the only fight that Volkanovski has recently lost is Islam Makachev, and that's mainly due to how short he is at lightweight. You give him Yair Rodriguez's height, fair fair height, evenly matched. It would be an easier fight for Volkanovski, and I believe he would have a much higher chance of coming away with a, a win. Even if you give him someone like Taporia's power, or I don't know. I don't, I mean, I'm trying to think of the fighters. There's nothing I can really think of that would make Volkanovski a better fighter. I think he beats everyone in the featherweight division in every aspect. So the only thing I can possibly think is improving his height, you know. That's the only thing. Maybe he needs to get a mohawk or something to get six foot because this guy, how tall is Volkanovski? Like 5'4"? He needs to get taller. Let's give him Yair Rodriguez's height, bro. And let's get him against Islam Makachev so we can come for the lightweight belt. Bantamweight. I'm going with Marab's cardio and Song Yidong's power. I just put Song Yisong. I'm going with Marab's cardio and Song Yidong power. I think the power either goes to Sean O'Malley or Song Yidong. I think Sean O'Malley's a better striker, but now that I watch everything back, Song Yidong's probably got better pure power. And Marab has got arguably the best cardio in the UFC. This would be a beast of a fighter. Marab would have a threat on the feet. Now, I'm not saying he's a dangerous striker. I'm not saying he's he's got great technique. But he would be on a he would be a threat on the feet with Song Yudong's power. You know, we might even see Marab sleep someone. But obviously, the cardio of Marab is unmatched. You know, Song Yudong of Marab's cardio would be insane as well. Because Car Marab, like I said, arguably the best cardio in the UFC, probably from running up all them cliffs. Song Yidong, I don't know what they're feeding him back in Japan, but he's got some serious power on him. You know, the fight with Ricky Simone showed, that, showed it all. So you put these two together, you've got one of the most dangerous bantamweights. Potentially beats uh, Aljamain Sterling because Song Yidong's power would be terrifying for Sterling. But then you've also got Marab's cardio, which can go five rounds non-stop. Um, definitely beats PT. I mean, Marab's already beaten PT Yan, but with Song Yidong's power, maybe PT Yan gets dropped. So I'm going to say that you, as a bantamweight, these are the two best qualities you can adopt. You've got the best power at bantamweight and the best cardio. So you would be a beast of a fighter. Absolutely insane. I'm sick of using martial arts. So I'm not going to use another wrestling striking example. But that for me is the best two attributes you can use at bantamweight. And finally for flyweight, we've got Brandon Moreno's speed and Alejandro Pantoja's power. These two are already the best of the best when it comes to flyweight. Moreno is the fastest flyweight, in my opinion, the fastest flyweight in the world, in the UFC at least. And I think he's the fastest fighter in the UFC. His hand speed is insane. But Pantoja, for me, I think he's got the most power. It's between Pantoja and Figueredo, but I'm going to go Pantoja because if you look at them fight, there's a clear theme going on with speed and power. Brandon Moreno has more speed and better technique, but... Alejandro Pantoja uses his power to become effective. So you give both of those, or you make one fighter have the other, you give Brandon Moreno Alejandro Pantoja's power, he's going to be slumping way more people. You give Pantoja and Brandon Moreno speed, he's going to catch that chin faster and slump more people. I think they're both ha they're some of the best of the best, but I think you that these are their best qualities, and they're the two best in the flyweight division, so you kind of merge their qualities, and you've got one incredible flyweight fighter. So I'm going to say you get Brandon Moreno speed, Pantoja's power, and you've got a beast of a fighter. But yeah, for that, that for me is the best combinations of fighters you can make in the UFC. Please let me know what your takes would be, if you have any of your own. And yeah, thank you for watching. Luke A. I knew he was going to beat Dos Anjos, but yeah, thank you for watching.